Hello, welcome to my channel. This problem is all about axial structures and specifically about figuring out which of these are statically determinate and which of these are statically indeterminate. So we know that these are axial structures because these applied forces, this one, this one, this one, they're running down the length of the member. We've also got two examples with a increase in temperature. And so we're going to be looking at linear temperature effects that are going to occur left to right, like so. For each one of these, our trick is going to be doing a free body diagram, doing a free body diagram, determining how many unknowns are present, tallying which equations of equilibrium we have to solve for those unknowns, and then I can subtract the equations of equilibrium from the unknowns to get my degree of indeterminacy. I think this one works better just by going through the examples, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, let us start our first one by freeing the body from the support. And so what I'm going to do is We will just free the body from the support, and I'm going to add in the reaction over here. That's the represents the effect the support has on the body. Since I have an applied force in the x direction, I'm going to have an equal and opposite force as my reaction over at the left support. Let's tally up how many unknowns do we have. Well, the only unknown is a sub x. That's a force in the x direction at a, and that's just one unknown. Next thing we want to do is determine how many equations of equilibrium are in play. And the one that we need to solve this problem is the summation of forces in the x direction equals zero. Um, that's just one equation of equilibrium. Our degree of indeterminacy, so I just take one minus one equals zero. And so this first structure we could say is statically determinate. In other words, we can solve the unknown AX using our statics equations or equations of equilibrium. Let's go to our next structure. Now we're looking at structure C, D. And just as before, we want to free the body from the support. So I'll just use my white out color to remove these supports and put some white color in there. Okay, excellent. And for this structure, we have the potential to develop a reaction at D, D sub X, and a reaction at C, C sub X. Why am I pointing the arrows to the left and not the right? Well, it's because I've studied this problem before, and I know that since my applied force is going to the right, these reactions are going to tend to go to the left. But if you don't see that and want to draw them in a different direction, um, that is certainly okay. Now, how many unknowns do we have? We have two, that's C sub X and D sub X. How many equations of equilibrium? Well, we've still got just the one summation of, of forces in the X direction is equal to zero. Two minus one equals one. That's our degree of indeterminacy, DOI. So we could say that this structure is one degree indeterminate. For each degree of indeterminacy, you have to write a compatibility equation, a deformation compatibility equation, in order to solve the system. All right, let's go to our next structure. This one, we have our member that is fixed at E, it is free at G, and we're not hitting it with a, con with a force of any type, but we are applying an increase in temperature. As before, let's make our free body. Let's just mask our support over at E. 
And what's going to happen to this structure as a result of that applied thermal increase, that change in temperature? Well, since G is unconstrained, G is just going to move over. That plane will translate. G will move over or translate from here to here. It's like the translation or displacement of plane containing G. Meanwhile, E is staying put here because of that fixed connection. So there is no reaction at E. There is no reaction at E. There are no reactions. And the reason why is because this member is unconstrained from thermal deformations. It simply elongates. It does not feel any pain. It's able to change length as temperature changes. So we have zero reactions, zero unknowns. And the rest of this really is kind of not applicable. Right, because if we don't have any unknowns to solve, we don't really need to tally equations of equilibrium. There's no forces in our.